Good afternoon. Welcome to Castletown, the ancient capital of man. We're at Castle Russian High School with students uh, Ailish and Thomas, Harrison and Hal and Ico, and Alex and Emily and Alice and Sophie. Next Wednesday, Tim Baker, MHK, Minister for Infrastructure, will be live on Man in Line. And a week today, we're at uh, St Ninian's High School. Uh, Harrison, uh, what was it about university you wanted to uh, say? I wanted to talk about universities because I think um, through lockdown and COVID, um, it's really put just the world in perspective for me and I quite I appreciate the Isle of Man a lot more than I did back then and I quite like to stay here so I'm currently looking at other alternatives to university so I can stay on the Isle of Man and live here what do you want to do um, I'm not sure yet I haven't figured it out but I have looked into apprenticeships because I think um, whilst there is a middle-class snobbery around app apprenticeships um, I can see past that and I think they are a really good access to Where a do you think this obsession with the university comes from? I think from little ages, like age four or five, you're, always, you're almost trained and conditioned into thinking that you've got to go through school, you do your GCSEs, then you do your A-levels, then you go off to uni and do something, and then come back and work in an office or something like that. But, well, it's um, not that way in other countries. In places no, like yeah. Germany, being an engineer is a really valued profession. Yeah. Um, the, only re the only reason I'd consider going to university is to do a vocational degree, such as um, engineering or product design. I wouldn't go to do something like history or geography, because in my eyes, I believe that's a waste of time. Harrison, why don't you like smoking? I, I don't like smoking because it's affected uh, the people personally in my life. I've seen the effects firsthand, so I've always been against it. And I have you ever smoked? No, not, not I haven't tried. Uh, what do you think about vaping? I believe it's only good. It's a good alternative to smoking if you're trying to quit. I feel like the consequences of vaping, whilst much is unknown about it at the moment because it's relatively new. I feel like it's a much better alternative to smoking and if anyone is smoking, I encourage you to take up vaping instead. We were talking though before we came on air and everybody in this room told me that young people smoke. Mm. That youngsters, name Sad. no names, within yeah. Castle Russian High School smoke. Mm. Uh, mm. Why would that be? For the reason, I'm not quite sure. I mean, it could be put on older siblings, older influences, uh, pressure from other people. I'm How? Not why? Sure. Why would you? Why, why do young people? Some young people. Well, smoke? I think it's just, it's just got to be like a looking up to the older people. The older people are right, like older students, and then they see it and they fall into the same crowd. And look, if your friends start doing it, then you're going to start doing it. And then it's just by the time they get to year eleven or whatever, the people younger than them are seeing them smoke, and it's just. A circle. Have you ever smoked? Uh, I have before. I don't smoke, but I've tried it. Yeah, and what do you think of it? it stinks. Yes. <laughs> Ico, do you smoke? I don't know. No, I don't. Now, you work in, uh, what's it called again? Dreambird. I know, uh, years, once upon a time, that would have been full of people who smoke. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but not now. No, no. no uh, Alex, do you smoke at all? Oh, sorry. I mean, have you ever smoked? Not at all. No, what do you think of people who smoke? Hmm. <laughs> I don't really mind them doing it to themselves as much. I'd rather they do it a safe distance away from me. <laughs> you know, it's a bit nasty when you're waiting for the bus and then someone just comes along inside the shelter and there's all the smoke and it's not nice. Times certainly change, don't they? Uh, Sophie, uh, we we're also talking about um, uh, behaviour of young pupils as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, as you get older in school, there's more and more... You, you've got more self-discipline as well. What what about uh, misbehaviour b b with younger pupils? Um, I definitely think it has got worse over the years, but I don't know if that's just because like, we've come up and now we've matured. Um, but through the years, it does seem to get worse. But I think it's just who you um, influence yourself and who you bring yourself around. If you're around negative people that are, not, that are naughty, you yeah. are going to be. Um, misbehaving it's aren't a you? It's a peer group pressure almost. I think it? so yeah and I think it's kind of that group because there's a lot um, in school you do see like you walk around and there's people trying to make people do things you know and it's just kind of that like pressure and want to get the attention. Now you live in where? 
I live in Colby. In Colby. Yeah. There's no vandalism or oh, no, m- misbehaviour no, in Colby. Quiet. No, no, all we have is a spa and a pub. It's quiet. <laughs> and a football club as well. Oh, yeah, and a football, yeah. Yes. That's good. Um, <laughs> Alice, you don't smoke, do you? No. Ever smoked? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You've gone very red, that's all I said. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go back to uh, uh, Thomas as well. We were talking also uh, about medicinal cannabis and recreational cannabis. It ties in with smoking as well. Uh, what do you think of medicinal cannabis and possibly being made legal? Well, I think it's coming. I think on the Isle of Man, there's a lot of double standards when you see the government looking for firms to export it, yet people are getting long prison sentences for bringing it over. I feel like we need to start looking at it as something to happen on the Isle of Man. I think if we, not just medical cannabis, but all sorts, if we legalise it on the Isle of Man, perhaps it could generate income for tourism. I think it's a good thing to look into. I mean, it will bring its problems. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, when when our economy is just based on low taxes, maybe having an alternative is a good idea. Mm. Okay. Uh, you are, um, he's not a head boy anymore. A uh, head student. Head student, that's yeah. what it is. And Ailish is... Also head students. You're yeah. also head students. So there's no head boy and head girl. We had this last week at, um, at King Williams College. I think uh, Balakameen's still got a head boy and a head girl. What's yeah. the thinking behind that, Ailish? I think it's just to make it sort of gender neutral. And I think our head of sixth form wanted it to be the two best candidates for it. So whether they were two girls or two boys, like it wouldn't matter. Or if there was someone who is um, gender non-binary, um, it makes it easier for anyone to be a head student. Okay. Um, how do you explain that? If anyone older asks you to explain that concept, what do you say to them? Uh, I just say they just cho- choose the two people who are best for the job, and that if it happens to be a girl and a boy, then it is. But if it's two girls, then it, that's just or two boys. That's just how it is. And tell me, what's your view about the the whole cannabis debate? Um, I think it should definitely be for medicinal purposes. I think if you were to start legalising it, um, it, it'd have to go through so many control levels. And, you know, who's going to produce it and where is it going to be produced? And there's lots of legal barriers to get through with it. Uh, In terms of the Isle of Man, um, for, and again, your age group is caught between young youth clubs and pubs with alcohol. You can't, you know, you're too old for one and too young for the other. So what do you think about provision for entertainment? Uh, I mean, everyone always says there's not much to do here. I mean, most of what I do would be like going out on a walk with a friend or something like that, or going to the beach. Um, I think that Hal was saying that they're making a new place in Port Erin uh, for like sports. Um, yeah, I just I don't know what you could do to like change it. Okay, Hal, um, what's what's this new thing that's happening? It's uh, at Briegel Glen. They're sort of like renovating the. Ba- I think it's like a basketball court with football nets on. And it's at like Astro as well, so it's just like a place where you can do it. And when's that happening? Um, soon I think, like this summer. And will you be off there? Probably. I used to go before it, but I think the net got ruined and broken. So. Mm, okay, um, we're with um, uh, Emily's here as well, and uh, I'll just go back onto that cannabis thing. What, what's your views about medicinal cannabis? Um, medicinal cannabis, I think it's easily should have been done years ago I think especially with the research behind it that it should be legalised and should be um, distributed There's uh, f- members of my family have MS and there's research that suggests cannabis medicinally uh, is really really uh, effective for people with MS um, but obviously the, there's no way to get it at the moment um, and leading on from that I should hope that and they will get to a point where uh, cannabis is legalised uh, recreationally because I personally think that it has so much benefits with crime over here so um, Hang on, say that again Benefits, so obviously there's obviously so much crime linked to cannabis and drugs and there's like Because it's illegal Because it's illegal, however if they legalise it that um, gets rid of such a big uh, a big section of well you see it in the news someone got fined a hundred pounds for having two pounds of cannabis on them and you get to a point where it's like there are people who are getting less sentences for much more severe crimes it's a big issue at the moment so you think take cannabis out of the hands of the criminals yeah and put it into something that can get taxed in a positive manner right um and be distributed in a more safe way as well We've got elections coming up in uh, September. What do you know about those? Um, so Are you registered to vote? I'm registered to vote, yeah. Um, I'm really passionate about it. I have been for a while. 
about different issues. So I want to look at um, voting for someone who's um, doing, who's got plans for climate change, uh, got plans for mental health, and also looking at like improving the island as a whole. And I'm really, really interested. Um, and I've started looking at candidates to vote for as well. Okay, Harrison. Yes, on to on the subject of the elections, um, in Arbury, I think I'll be voting for Tim Glover <laughs> because he's. I've met him and he really cares about things like mental health and he, I think I think he sees through the eyes of the youth, and he's got links with the youth, so I think he'll be the best person to. Uh, project our voice. Other candidates are available in uh, Arbury Castle Town and Maloo. Mm. Uh, how important do you think it is um, that people vote? I think it's extremely important and I think it's a known fact that the youth don't go out and vote as much as older generations do and there's of course going to be a difference in opinion between the oldies and us. <laughs> so um, that and that's shown in the results. So I think if the youth uh, really want things to change, they should vote for a candidate that is willing to do that. Okay, Eilish? Yeah, um, so I think the candidates for um, Arbury Castan and Malou, which is my constituency, are Tim Glover, H.M. The Soul, and Steve Crabber. They're the ones that have like said that they're going to uh, go for it. Um, and our current ones are Krajina and Morehouse. Um, and I think that it is really important that we as the youth vote, um, especially for me, I think of it in a historical context. Uh, as a woman, I didn't have a vote um, for most of history, um, and especially as a young person as well, I wouldn't have had a vote. Because either. the Isle of Man was one of the first to give the vote yes, to women. Yeah, uh, but it was only certain women who owned property and were married. Uh, so we've come a long way, and so I, I want to use my democratic right to vote to hopefully have a bit of a, m my say in how I want the island to go in the future because it is the elections affect us more because we are going to be the ones living here longer. Well, yes, and how do you say, how, how would you counter to people of your age who would say, politics means nothing to me, I don't know anything about politics, and, you know, they'll get on with what they want to do anyway? Uh, I think uh, perhaps, like, um, in school, it should be talked about more, um, that politics does affect pretty much every aspect of life. Um, um, especially as you get into adulthood and stuff like that, like the politics of your country may affect your jobs and everything like that. So I think there just needs to be more of an awareness about ha how politics affects the world. Uh, Emily, I just wanted to, to talk to you about, you mentioned uh, mental health provision. What did you mean by that? Um, so at the moment, uh, the facility for young people, um, uh, CAMS, it's got such a long waiting list and it's a really grueling task to try and get in. And I think it's important because um, in, our, in our generation, uh, the mental, mental health is obviously becoming less stigmatised. So more people are comfortable with talking about it, yet nowadays more people suffer issues because, um, because of the way the media works and especially with lockdowns. So I think it's important to... Um, we need to start making a way that uh, it needs to be so the waiting list needs to like shorten we need to find a positive way especially like in schools um i know that Juan watterson has just uh, put a grant towards our school um for mental health provisions specifically for sick formers um which is great but it would be great to see that in each school and have like a bigger department and even like island wide. Can you be a bit more specific when you say mental health? What sort of issues? Um, so uh, depression, anxiety, uh, depersonalization, and you've got um, like bipolar and even like schizophrenia and stuff. They're all that they're talked about more, but there's still like there is still sort of a stigma behind it. But um, the the access to services that help you over here from my experience in talking to people is so difficult to get a grasp of and it that that needs to be sorted any politician will say that what you're talking about costs money yes um, they, they always say that yeah mm -hmm. but um that it, it costs money but lives are on the line like it's so important it, regardless of money there are so many children especially that people's lives are on the line with mental health and it's it's almost forgotten about sometimes that
people are dying due to this. It's, it's, we're in an epidemic of mental health at the moment. And do you think that's because of COVID or was it there before? I think COVID's been a great catalyst in it, but I think it's always been there, I think, uh, especially in recent years, but, but even uh, pre-COVID, it's just now become more of an issue as more and more people are stuck indoors and stuck away from people. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's longer than COVID. Okay, uh, Hal, um, I just want to ask you something. What do you think of the price of houses on the Isle of Man? Do you uh, look down the line and think you want to own a house? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it's um, it's just going up because everyone's buying now, and um, as soon as pe people like who are richer have money, it's going into houses and getting rented. So and you see that as a as, as a personal goal. You 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 think that getting a property will be a successful point in your life. Definitely, yeah. Um, and what do you think, if prices are continuing to go up, um, do you think it's beyond you? Do you think it's going to be more difficult to get a house? It's definitely going to be more difficult, and especially with when houses, housing prices goes up, rent will go up, and it'll be hard, harder to save for it. So, but I would like to live in a house, yeah. Okay. Um, have you had any discussions with people and have you chatted to any family about buying a house no not yet well i plan on going to uni so it's quite a far far ahead in the future so mm. Ico, what about you would you like to own a house yeah i would love to own a house um after uni like how because it's quite far away um what part do you think that would play i mean in, in making you know as a citizen yeah do you think owning a house is important um I think it's good, but also like renting a house, like a council house. I live in a council house, and sometimes that's more suitable to people who maybe don't have a bigger income than other people. I mean, if you have the income and the money, yeah, it's great. Buy a house. Uh, what do you think about the pressure to succeed? The Isle of Man is a very affluent island. Yeah. Uh, there are There is an element of poverty on the Isle of Man, but there's a lot of affluence and not many people out of work on the Isle of Man. Yeah. Do you think there's a pressure to succeed? Definitely. I, yeah, I see that a lot because uh, obviously there is a lot of poverty on the man and it isn't talked about a lot. And when you have a lot of money, it's, yeah, people show it off and, yeah. Big yeah. cars. Big cars, big houses. How yeah. does that make you feel? Um, I do get jealous about it because I have a single parent and we don't have as much income as other people, so I can't afford to drive because me and my dad can't put the money together. And it does, it does make me jealous, but I do understand, I, I do understand that mm. if I work hard, then I'll be able to earn that myself. Uh, uh, it's, uh, Alice, I was going to ask you about the pressure to succeed on the Isle of Man. Yeah, you think there, there is, is definitely a big pressure to succeed yeah. on the Isle of Man. I do think that, yeah, definitely. So all the, uh, the big houses and the big cars, does that bother you at all? Um, well, like Ico, I'm from a council house, so I don't have like the luxuries of a big house and a big car. But but if you were to talk to people from outside the Isle of Man, they think everyone on the Isle of Man's a millionaire. Really? Well, to be fair... No, they do. Yeah, well, that's definitely not the case, because <laughs> there is a lot of poverty on the island that we don't hear a lot about, because it's such a small island. But you don't see homeless people on the street. It's I think the island does deal with it well. Um, but Are you yeah. going to uh, look to buy a house yourself? Oh, definitely. In the future, yeah. I'm not in a rush to buy a house. so. But yeah, I will, hopefully, one day. <laughs> okay, Sophie, are you going to buy a house? Um, yeah, yeah, when I'm older. Um, but on to Alice's point about um, the rich people, you do get the rich people that kind of show off, but then the people that are more grateful for what they have, so they're grateful for when they get a car, grateful for when they do get a house because obviously they've like worked hard and paid for it so yeah mm, okay um Ailish um just want to chat to you about uh the purpose of history you were talking about history and what it teaches you yes um how much history is taught here at Castle Russian uh well you have to do history up to year nine and that's sort of it's mainly British history from about 1066 to modern day times and then if you do GCSE you do Germany and the Nazis and then at A level at the moment we do the Was the Roses, we do a bit of American history, we're doing Chinese history, we do 200 years of Chinese history and then our course works on the restoration of the monarchy. You're obviously a big fan of history. Yes. Did this come from family or did you just soak it up? Uh, well, as a, I do uh, reenactment, uh, so I reenact the Wars of the Roses with my family. I've always done that since I was a little kid. 
Um, but I, I've always found history really interesting. Like I watched horrible histories as a kid and that always really fascinated me. And then just as I got into high school, I had such a good teacher that it just inspired me to take it further. And it's just it's so amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks for being with us today. We've been with uh, Early Schwartz, Thomas Curphy, Harrison Pickard, Hal Sansbury, Ico Jones, Alex Goffey, uh, Emily Thompson's been here as well, Alice Hodgson Cummins and Sophie Howland. Uh, I'm Andy Went, and uh, we've been at Castle Russian High School to, uh, School today. Remember, next Wednesday, Tim Baker um, coming in to talk about um, the infrastructure on the Isle of Man, and this time next week we'll be at St Ninian's. Uh, but for the moment, thanks to all the pupils at St Ninian's. A big round of applause. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>